Hello folks and welcome to lecture number five for CS 1322. In this lecture I'm going to talk a little bit about array lists um, for each loops and iterators. Um, so without further ado let's go ahead and get started here. Um, so an array list is very similar to an array in that it holds information um, in a single dimension. So in an array you would typically start off and say this is an array of integers, there are 10 cells, and then you have 10 cells that you can put integers into, remove integers out of, etc. The downside of an array, as we previously talked, is that arrays are limited to the size that you originally create them. Once you say that it is of size 10, you can never put an 11th item in there. Whereas an array list dynamically grows and shrinks as it needs to. So an array list is everything that an array is, mostly, with a couple of additional features, such as it gives us a bunch of methods for adding stuff to the array, removing stuff from it, maybe even sorting the array and some stuff like that. And it also has the ability to grow as we need to add more things in there. So when would this be appropriate? Well, if you're going to ask the user for some level of input and they're going to type something in, you don't know how many things they're going to give you. Um, so in that case, if you create an array, you would have to guess how big it's ever going to need to be and then set it to that size, which is wasteful because you may overestimate, well, they'll never give me more than a million items. Okay, great. I'll set an array of one million items. Well, that means that every time that you start up the program, it's going to consume enough RAM to actually hold all of that information. But you may never use that. They may only give you four items, at which point you did something crazy. So you want to have something that's a little bit more dynamic, and that's the advantage of array lists. Um, all right, there's one very important distinction that we have to talk about up front between Java and C Sharp. C Sharp allows you to create an array list of any type that includes primitive types as well as objects. So you can have an array list of characters, an array list of integers, an array list of um, cars, if you create a class of cars. Java, on the other hand, does not specifically allow you to create an array list of primitive types. They must be array lists of objects. So that's a very important distinction. So in Java, if you want an array list of integers, you have to use a wrapper class which we haven't talked about yet, but a wrapper class for each of the primitive types is just the capital letter fully spelled out name. So the wrapper class for int is integer with a capital I. The wrapper class for long is long with a capital L, and so on and so forth. Um, those wrapper classes give you a couple of methods, and they allow you to deal with integers and booleans and longs and floats and doubles. Um, so if you want a array class, I'm sorry, an array list of integers in Java, you must use the integer wrapper class. Okay, so that's really important. So again, the distinction there is Java does not allow array lists of primitive types, only objects. C sharp does. All right, so now that we've said that, let's talk a little bit about how you actually define it. So here on the screen, you can see an example of how you would do it. You start off with the word array list. And then in angle brackets, you're going to specify the type that you need an array list of. So in this case, we're doing an array list of strings. Strings is not a primitive type, so that's fine. This will work in Java. And then you give it a variable name, just like anything else. So the only thing that's new here are these angle brackets. And again, that's to specify which type of object the array list is going to hold in Java, or which type the array list is going to hold in C Sharp. So array list strings names, that's your variable, gets new array list of strings, and then the curly braces at the end of the line. That's the syntax. This can only hold strings. Um, so in this case, you've specified it's for strings, you must put strings in there. Uh, initially, Java is going to allocate an array of size 10 effectively, um, an array list of size 10. But as you start using the add methods, if there's a need, it will grow it automatically. You don't have to worry about that. So it has two um, parameters that you might want to pull back. One of them is called size, and that is with a capital S. Size will tell you how many items you have put into the array list. So if you create something new like we did here, names, and you ask for size immediately, you'll get back zero. If you then add something to the array list and ask for the size, you'll get back one whereas capacity tells you how big it currently actually is. All right, so looking at that in C Sharp, um, this is going to be slightly different syntax. So it's array list and the variable name equals new array list. That can hold different kinds of objects. Initially, it sets it to 16. 
uh, which is just the default size that it goes. Again, it will still automatically grow just like the other one. And instead of asking for size, you'll ask for count to know how many items are inside of there. All right, so a quick review, difference between arrays and array list. Arrays are of a fixed size, whereas array lists are variable. Um, arrays hold objects and primitive data types, whereas in Java, array lists only hold objects. Um, Array lists hold homogeneous data. Uh, array lists um, hold data of a specific type, and so on and so forth. All right, so basic things that you might want to do with an array list now that you've created it. Well, we have an add function, which of course has different capitalization depending on Java and C Sharp, but that adds an item into the list. Um, remove, which also takes in an index um, if you specifically want to remove a particular item. Um, size or count, which again tells you how many things are in there. Um, and you can still, uh, in C Sharp, you can actually access it even like it is an actual array. Um, in Java, you have to use the get, the get method. All right, so I'm going to do a quick example um, in REPL. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new class, which I'm going to stick in a new file. I'm going to call it um, phonebook phonebook.java. All right, and in this uh, phonebook, I am going to allow for um, people to store names and phone numbers. Um, so the first thing that I will have to do is I'm going to need to include um, uh, the, um, I'm going to need to include the array list. So I'm going to import java. second here. Let me grab this so that it, you're not having to watch me type. I'm just going to pull in some of the data to start with. Okay, so just to save you watching me type, I have gone ahead and imported the two libraries that I'm going to need here. So to be clear, what I'm trying to do in this example is I'm going to have a phone book where I'm going to ask people to enter in the name and phone number of a person. I'm going to allow them to enter in as many as they might want to do, and then I'm going to give them a function to see their phone book. So very basic stuff. So in order to do that, I'm going to need an array list for the names and also an array list for the phone numbers. So what I've done is I've defined two array lists, array list of strings for the names and created that, and an array list of longs for the phone numbers. Again, please remember um, primitive types like long. I can't directly say long. That's why I'm using a capital L, which is the wrapper class. All right. In order for this to work, I also have to import um, Java Util array list, and I'm going to also read in information from the user. So I need scanner if you remember that as well. All right, so we're going to need, first off, um, a menu, something that asks the user what it is that they're trying to do. And we're going to give them three options. Option number one, we're going to allow them to add a person to the phone book. Option number two, we're going to print out the phone book. And option number three, they're going to quit. And it's just going to keep asking them until they do that. So we're going to have um, public uh, method, because this is obviously going to be callable from outside. And this is going to not actually return anything. So we're going to do public void menu. I'm not taking any parameters here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my scanner. So I'm going to say scanner my input uh, equals new scanner, and then it's system.in. All right, and then we're going to basically set up a menu. I'm going to say do, um, and I'm going to system.out.println. Choose the following, and I'm just going to print out this menu. So this is a do while loop. So I'm going to say while choice is not three, um, I'm going to keep asking. Now that's a little bit weird because in reality, if they type in four, eh, not really sure what we're supposed to do here, but okay, 
it is what it is. It'll basically just ignore it because we're not going to write any code to deal with that circumstance. All right, so I need to read in. So I'm going to say choice equals uh, my input uh, dot re next int because I'm reading in an integer in this circumstance for the menu option. All right, and then I'm going to say if their choice is one, then I'm going to call some function called add user, which I haven't written yet. If their choice is is two, and then I'm going to call a function called show users. And I haven't written that one yet either. And while the choice is not three, it's going to go down there. The only thing that's a problem here is that I need to define um, the choice, which is an int. So create that. I guess I'll set it to zero at the beginning. It doesn't really matter whether I initialize it or not because it's reading it in first thing. All right, so that's my menu. If I were to run this right now, I'm going to get an error because these two methods are not defined. So I'm going to go ahead and define those methods. All right, so we're going to have a public add user. And again, that takes in no parameters as I currently have it written. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to ask them to give me a name. And that pasted in the most ridiculous way ever, of course. All right. name and I need to read in a name so I'm going to again have a string here because I'm reading in a string so I'm going to say string new name equals my input dot next line because I'm reading in a string I want to go ahead and define um, my input again up here Of course, you could have defined that earlier instead of doing it locally in each one of the methods, but that's fine. All right, so we got that in here, and now we're going to ask them for their phone number. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in the most ridiculous way possible. Hey, there we go. That's not so bad. All right, what is the phone number? And this time I'm reading in, I'm actually going to read in a long. Uh, Phone numbers are big, right? They got 10 digits, and so that's going to be actually larger than the size of an int. So I'm going to need to specifically pull that in. Um, so I'm going to call this new phone, and it is of type long. All right, uh, long with a lowercase l, not long with an uppercase l. Great. So now we're going to actually stick that into our two array lists. So I'm going to say names, which is the name of my array list up here, names.add, simple as that. I'm going to pass it in my new name. And then I'm going to say phone numbers dot add, and I'm going to pass it in the new, new phone number. Easy peasy. That's all I got to do to add them in there. All right, you know that these are defined as private, um, so they are local to the last phone book, um, but I am now able to just add and remove things from them, and it's a nice little scratch pad. All right, we got one more method to write, which is real simple as well. And that's going to be the C, what did I call it? Show users, I called it show users. All right, and well, okay. We are going to do nothing other than print them out. Now, the problem that we have here is that I have two separate array lists and they actually have nothing to do with each other. It is conceivable that I could add something to one and not add a corresponding entry to the other. Um, I haven't done that, and the only method that I'm exposing is the add user method. So theoretically, no one should ever be able to actually get them out of sync. Um, but something just to be aware of, you would always want to think about this circumstance. If you're trying to keep two things in sync like this, you need to make sure that the methods that you're giving people to interact with it guarantee that they always give you a phone number and a name. Otherwise, you could have one list have two items in it and one list have three items in it. Why does that matter? Well, because what I'm about to do is I'm about to iterate through the two lists and print out the values that are in them. So if there's more in one than in the other, that would be a problem. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable for a index. So I'm going to say int index, and I'm going to set it to zero, because again, array lists, just like arrays, are indexed from zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, for each syntax that we talked about in one of the previous slides. 
So I'm going to say for string, because that's what I'm getting out of the names uh, array list. I'm going to call it current name in names. All right, so that's going to iterate through the names array list. And each time it goes from cell to cell, it's going to take out the current name and shove it into a variable called current name. All right, and so we're going to put curly braces around that. And what I'm going to do is system.out.println. And I'm going to say name. Well, I'm going to go ahead and use this index variable that I called zero. And I'm going to say cell, uh, okay, double quotes, cell plus index plus contains. And I'm going to put in the name at the end there. All right, so I'm concatenating the word cell followed by a number, which is going to be zero, followed by contains, and then followed by the actual um, person's name. And then I'm going to try and print out the phone number using that. Now, how do I know which phone number I want to print out? Well, that's why I have this index variable. So the first one that this um, for each loop is going through is going to be for index zero. Presuming that there was something in index zero, we went into this loop. So I know that right now I'm looking at index zero. At the end of this, after I print out the phone number, I'm going to say index plus plus, which is going to move the index to one. If I go through the loop again, then I know there's an index one in the phone numbers. And again, this is the weirdness of keeping two things in sync. All right, so what I'm going to print out here is phone number, and I'm going to, I guess, put a nice little colon in there, and then I'm going to plus. Now, what is it that I'm actually going to print out here? Well, it's the actual phone numbers. So that's in my array list, which I called phone numbers. So it is phone numbers dot get, uh, get, and then the position number, which is index. All right, so that's going to get back for me the fifth or the seventh or the first, in this case, the zeroth index. And again, array lists are zero indexed. All right, so that should do it. Let's find all of the things that I did wrong. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go ahead and compile that. And let's see, public show users. Uh, well, that's because I forgot to say it's a void because it's not actually returning anything. And let's see what else I did. Uh, you know what, I did that with add user as well. That's not very smart. Okay, and I forgot a semicolon at the end of the while loop. Great. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is over in my main driver, I need to actually do something with this. So I'm going to go over to main, and I will debug that last thing here in just a moment. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate that class. So I called it uh, phonebook. I'm going to call it my phone book. All right, and then I just have to call menu. And I'm pretty sure I called it menu. Did I call it menu? I did. All right, so back to debugging what other problems I have here. Um, Find simple. Um, all right, so that is on line six. No, because I called it strings. That was not very smart. <laughs> Did I do that anywhere else? Well, and I misspelled it down here. All right. So I know watching me debug something is not exactly exciting, but I want to realize I want you guys to realize that everybody has typos. That's normal. So don't get frustrated when you run into something like that. All right, so we're going to add a user to the phone book. We're going to say their name is Enda, and their phone number is 404-123-4567. Uh, is that enough digits? I think that is enough digits. All right, I'm going to add another user. This is going to be Jane. And Jane is seven seven zero one two three four five six seven. All right, we're going to see everybody in the phone book. And cell zero contains Enda. Cell one contains Jane. 
And I could obviously add as many users as I wanted in there, and the array list would continue to grow for me. Um, so that's the cool feature of array lists. I don't have to worry about the size. It'll just automatically be there when I need it. So hopefully that example is helpful. That example is posted on my REPL. You can see the URL up at the top there. You can just go to replit slash at Sullivan, and it'll be in there. I think I called it um, phone book is what I apparently called it. All right, so that's that example. Um, you saw me use a for each iterator here, and so that's what I'm doing. Um, iterators are a very specific term that are used with regard to any time that you're going over an array list, you're actually iterating through all of the items. To iterate means to go to the first thing, then go to the second thing, then go to the third thing and work your way through it. Iterators are an automatic feature that exists. Um, as a matter of fact, the for each um, that we have been using is in the background using an iterator. Um, so these are both ways that we could have written uh, the same, um, uh, the, the for each loop, depending on whether I'm in C sharp or Java. Um, and here is another just quick example. In this case, what we're doing is we have a main and it's creating a new array list. Uh, this is in C sharp. And then we're adding variables into that list and we are printing them out using the for each for each int x in the list console write line. That's the syntax for a for each loop in C sharp. The equivalent in Java is a little less succinct. It is integer x colon and then the name of the um, the name of the array list that we're iterating over. Um, all right, so move slides randomly. An iterator, as I mentioned, is a um, is a method that allows you to go through an array list. Um, does them one at a time, and very specifically a couple of methods that are very useful is next and has next. So when you're whenever you're ready to pull the next thing out of the array list, you would simply access next. And how do you know if there is something there? Well, that's what has next tells you. Has next it will return a Boolean of yes or no, there isn't something there. Um, this is the syntax that we're going to use if we're doing this example in Java. So again, we have an array list. In this case, it's of a wrapper class of integers. And we are putting a bunch of stuff in there. And then this is the new syntax for using the iterator directly. This is yet another way of iterating through a list. We've already seen that you can do it with a for loop and you can just ask for the size or the count of the array list. And then you can keep track of which index you're doing or you can use the for each method, which is what we did in the uh, last example, where you use the colon and the name and it iterates through them for you. The third possibility is you can directly call the has next and the next. So we just set up a iterator off of my list. My list up here is the array list. So I'm saying iterator in or iter, <laughs> I-T-E-R, iter, um, is my list dot iterator. And then I'm saying while iter has next system out print line iter dot next. And that will actually just return for you the next item out of the array, which in this case, array list, which in this case is of type integer. And so it'll just print an integer. So that's the example there. Um, so again, in brief summary, array lists, super cool. They allow you to store a bunch of stuff in an array that dynamically grows and shrinks depending on what you put in it um, for loops for each loops and iterators are three different ways that you can go through a collection of items, an array list being an example of a collection of items. So that completes the topics for this week, uh, module two. Um, we are going to move on to module three uh, next week, and we're going to do a review of some of the object oriented stuff. So I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I will see you next week in lecture number six. Thanks. Bye-bye.